what, what really, really are, are star, star you and star, star me. me? They're starfish. But no, actually, it's a lot cooler than that, because I mean, starfish aren't psychic, don't come from space, have glowing gems in their core, fly, or sound like this. Alright, alright, enough of that. So really, what is up with all of that? And how does it point not only to the origins of itself, but to the origins... No, to the very foundation of Pokémon as a whole. Star U's base design is very straightforward. It's like a hard starfish. Just your common starfish, but instead of a squishy body that lays flat, it's a hard and stiff material that allows it to stand upright. Upon evolving, it's now a star me. It's gotten bigger and gained some extra limbs. Five more, to be exact. There are numerous kinds of starfish with more than five legs, though interestingly enough, nine and eleven are significantly more common than ten exactly. But most of these are called sun stars, since they are much larger and have much bigger cores. Generally. Anyway, and of course, many species of starfish come in a variety of colors, orange and tans being some of the most common, with purples and blues being not super rare, but for sure less common. So add that purple rareness to the extra big gem in the center, and well, it's a worthy evolution. But speaking of the gem in the center, what the heck? Actually, a lot of Pokemon have these gems in the center, especially in Gen 1 and 2. Golduck, Persian, Slowking, and Espeon. The Gen 2s? Yeah. Some later Gen Pokemon have them as well, and basically it's how a lot of Pokemon dish out their psychic attacks. The gem is placed right where the third eye is typically located, a sort of spiritual eye that can see the unseen due to psychic ability, and gemstones of many sorts are said to have supernatural or metaphysical properties, enhancing psychic powers. In our Golduck video, I go way more into all that, as it's especially important to Golduck. So yeah, water psychic starfish have the gem in the center to enhance their psychic powers. But why? Why do the starfish need psychic powers? What's, what's the reasoning behind that? Well, it's not as uncommon as you'd might think. Meet Starro, the Conqueror, a Justice League supervillain created in 1960. Not only is it a starfish alien, but it has its eye in the center. It's purple, and it creates brownish tan underlings. And, of course, it has psychic powers. It can mind control humans to do its bidding. And Starro wasn't just limited to the 60s, as it would reappear a number of times over the decades as an Aquaman villain, and again and again as a Justice League villain. And plus, to further connect them. Star you and Star Me are possibly aliens too, according to some Pokedex entries. Anyway, quote, when away from humans, its core is said to glow mysteriously in seven colors. This Pokemon may have come from outer space. Star you apparently communicates with the stars in the night sky by flashing the red core at the center of its body. Its core shines in many colors and sends radio signals into space to communicate with something. Plus, I mean, a starfish from the stars. Stars! <laughs> That's hilarious, right? And it's using light and radio waves to communicate, a classic alien movie trope. But is that to say that Staryu and Starmie are based on a giant alien sea star from the DC universe? I mean, Pokemon was made in the 90s, that gives plenty of time for a kid who likes Starro to grow up and later work with Game Freak, right? Well, maybe. But there's more. Like I said, it's not exactly a unique concept. Black Doom from Shadow the Hedgehog of all things manifests his literal third eye as a psychokinetically flying starfish. A recent movie called Starfish is about a woman who gets supernatural visions of a coming disaster that winds up being caused by a giant starfish-like alien. But these are all too recent. We need to go back. So here's a classic 1956 Japanese sci-fi movie called Warning from Space, which features... Yeah people in bedsheets with an eyeball gut I, I mean, starfish aliens with superpowers and a single eye in the center. While it's pretty unknown in the West, it's apparently a decent cult hit, even being cited as what inspired Kubrick to make 2001 a space odyssey. But wait! There's more! Take a gander at uh, Hitode, Hitode Murasaki, which translates to starfish purple. But I mean, look at it. Now look at Staryu. Well, now back to it. Clearly, some inspiration was going on. Starfish Purple is also able to just fly for no apparent reason, and it hails from Kikaider, one of those old Monster of the Week live-action kaiju kid shows. It was created by the same guy that made Kamen Rider and Super Sentai, which is what started the trend that led to the Power Rangers and the ridiculous popularity they have. In fact... Wait... 
yeah, that just about explains everything. These shows have a long and prosperous history in Japan, especially back when just about all of the original creators of Pokémon were kids. Impressionable youngins. Staryu and Starmie's anime cries and over-the-top poses are basically what these Japanese superheroes are all about. And, and the monsters and villains that they fought, especially at the time, ranged from deep-sea kaijus to aliens. And one time even Starfish Hitler. Yeah. There he is. He combines all the deadly powers of a starfish with the wicked martial artist skills of the Fuhrer. What even were these shows? One of these big shows, Ultraman, is one of the longest running TV shows in history. Getting its start in 1966, and it's still going. There's still new episodes and movies coming out. Ultraman is an icon in Japan, basically what Superman or Spider-Man are to Americans. And you see, you see that round gem in his chest? When he gets really, really damaged and beat up, it starts flashing. Exactly what Staryu's core does in the anime. And Ultraman has fought a bunch of starfish kaiju. Deimos, the brittle sea star, and another, Paystar, which is two giant starfish with a bat head that breathes fire and attacks the Middle East because it drinks oil. But just to further solidify Ultraman as a big source of inspiration, not only is Staryu basically a tokusatsu hero, the genre we've been talking about, but in an interview with Sugimori and Tajiri about the early development and conceptualization of Pokémon as a whole, they mentioned that before they were called Pokémon, they were called Kapumon, capsule monsters, and that the whole concept came from the fond memories of Tajiri's childhood, and how much he loved to pretend he had Capsule Kaiju, a thing from Ultra 7, which obviously is a part of the Ultraman franchise. When Ultraman was unable to transform for whatever reason, he would summon a captured Kaiju to fight for him, and they were all sealed in these tiny capsules. It functions very similarly to a Pokeball, and the name Kapumon was only changed because they began to fear legal action because of the similar concept and similar names, so it became Pocket Monsters, or Pokémon, instead. But yes, the entire concept of Pokémon as a whole was inspired by a single aspect of one series of the Ultraman franchise, and Staryu and Starmie are essentially homages to that fact. In fact, Staryu's name in Japanese also follows suit, Hitodemon literally means Starfish Man. It's the same naming scheme as many superheroes and villains in these shows. And it doesn't even stop at Staryu. Godzilla is technically the same genre or filming technique, a tokusatsu. And have you ever wondered what Nido King even is? We'll wonder no more because he's Baragon, an underground dwelling kaiju from the Godzilla series. Speaking of, there's of course Tyranitar, often cited as being Godzilla himself. And thus, its rivalry with Duraludon would make it akin to Mechagodzilla. But then again, take a look at Bemular from Classic Ultraman. Is that not literally Tyranitar with some tweaks? But then what of the rivalry with Duraludon? Well, much more recently, Bemular was rebooted with a robot suit, and Duraludon is a much more recent Pokémon. Is Takong from Ultraman not just Golem? Heck, is Dynamaxing not just Ultraman's growing power to fight giant kaijus, which he can capture in that one season? But that's not to say Godzilla isn't an inspiration to an extent, and Tyranitar can very well be both, a sort of in-between of Godzilla and Bemular. But for sure, Giratina resembles Batra, the evil twin of Mothra, I mean, look at that. Look at that. Holy moles! And yeah, I guess that makes Gigantamax Butterfree sort of like Mothra. You know what? I'm just gonna make a whole video about all these and more. Yeah, let's do that. I guess I'll see you then, huh? But for now, Staryu and Starmie are psychic alien starfish inspired by Ultraman like many other early Pokémon. And now, I'm gonna leave you off with a fun fact. That should probably have been earlier in the video. Starfish alien is actually such a thing it became the name of a trope. Not just aliens that are literally starfish, but rather it means aliens with such non-humanoid anatomy or forms that they just seem super strange. Like a starfish. In fact, starfish themselves do seem super weird, right? And that's not only because they are, but because they are one of the very few creatures not to feature a bilateral form. They don't have a left or right. That, that's meaningless to them. They aren't symmetrical. And also, that's why ten-armed starfish are so uncommon. Usually it's just an eleven-armed starfish that has lost an arm. But don't worry, they grow back. And, uh, yeah. Staryu and Starmie are way cool. 
and have pointed us to some of the furthest back history of the creation of the Pokémon franchise in, in the first place. Staryu, after all, was among the first Pokémon ever designed, and directly reflects the main character from the show that inspired Tajiri to join Sugimori in creating the Pokémon franchise. It laid the very foundation of it all. And that's pretty dang awesome. Now until next time, you never stop using your noggin. <laughs> <laughs>